You don't got to figure everything out. Your heart will lead you. And that all rhymed, so I believe it was prophecy or a Hallmark card. Hallelujah. Well, it rhymed. It's got to be prophecy. Okay, so anyway, you, you trust the joke. Verse 6. If anyone does, does not abide in me, let's see, well, I forget that. In verse 7, well, don't forget it, but you know what I'm saying, and that's where I'm going. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you desire, and it'll actually get done for you. By this, my Father gets glorified. You'll bear much fruit, and you will be my disciples. So we need to look at that. That's another thing, too. How many people do you pray around that are a disciple of the word? A lot of prayers, you can't talk the word with them. They're just flying without a license. So let's go to uh, 1 John real quick. 1 John 2, and look what that word abide means. Because if you can get the word abide in you and you abide in him, you just start asking what you will and it'll actually get done. 1 John 2, and I think it's like 27, says here, but the anointing, okay, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. Go ahead and put your hand on your belly and say this. Say, thank you, Lord. I have an anointing. I have an anointing. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, I have an anointing. I have an anointing. Yeah, when you get happy, it'll work for you. Hallelujah. So you have to be an overactor. Yeah, overact, you know. <laughs> I'm from LA. Overact. I have an anointing, you know. You won't win any awards. Hallelujah. But you get the will of God done. Hallelujah. Verse 27, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you don't need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, just as it has taught you, you're going to abide in him. Yeah, so if you can get that anointing on the inside of you to teach you the word of God, you'll start abiding in him. And have you ever seen Pastor Mark? We were just here last uh, Wednesday night, last Wednesday night. He's like, well, this wasn't what I was going to teach on. And he's like, he, he takes away, he goes away from his notes. He's like, let's turn over here, let's turn over here, let's turn over here. And you're like, gosh, maybe I better get saved again. Because he has whole passages of scripture. He has whole pieces of scripture just coming out of him, you know. That's because it's lodged in his heart. And it's alive. It's not a seminary student thing. It was memorized that makes you have a headache trying to keep up with them. It's like the spirit of truth rising up and teaching you. Amen? Because he stockpiled it in his heart. Amen? So the most simplest thing that we can... Uh, John 16, 13. And, well, how about First John 5, 6? Real quick here. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. We're going for the B part of the verse. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is truth. See, all we're going to tell you to do is pray that Ephesians prayer that I demonstrated earlier. Pray it over yourself. Pray Ephesians 1, 17 through 23 over yourself before you ever open your Bible. Then when you do open your Bible, open it up, I would say, to the epistles and start there. Then just start reading your Bible like you're mowing grass. Just start going and let scriptures jump out at you. Let scriptures uh, be uh, either a bless you or convict you. Whatever it is, acknowledge those scriptures and write them down and maybe even what you feel like God might be saying to you about those scriptures. Let the Holy Ghost bear witness to whatever scriptures he wants to bear witness to. As you follow the bear witnesser, you'll become a witness for the Lord. You'll become a witness of the Lord. Hallelujah. You'll see him. If you can follow him through the scriptures, that inward witness, the number one way the saint is led is by the inward witness, not by a prophet, not by a prophecy, but by, not by your head, not by your mind, will, and emotions, not by circumstances, but by the inward witness, the divine uh-huh or uh-uh. Amen. That inward witness, if you'll just dare. Sometimes the Lord would say that to me. He goes, I dare you to acknowledge what scriptures are jumping out at you. I dare you. I dare you to take your hand off my mouth and acknowledge certain scriptures that are jumping out. Whether you know what they mean or not, if they jump out, write them down. He's made my tongue like the pen of a ready writer. Amen. He, I'm ready to write. By faith, I'm going to get something. Pray that Ephesians prayer over yourself. Read the New Testament. Write down scriptures that jump out at you. Write down what you feel like the Lord's saying to you about those scriptures. Then in your prayer time, I double dog Daria, at the beginning of your prayer time, pray the Ephesians prayer again. Well, why do I have to pray it all the time? Because you're praying the word 
And the, the epistle prayers are doorways into places in God. Some people spend all this time praying in other tongues. And they, all they're really doing is building themselves up on their most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. They pray for 45 minutes because they've only got a dab or a lack of substance, like what Pat, Reverend Hain was saying. Uh, they've just got a little bit of substance of the word. It takes them 45 minutes to get edified. Well, when 45 minutes is up and you're edified, that's where you start praying from. But if you'll start with the Ephesians prayer, putting a demand on it when you pray. If you have 10 minutes to pray, it doesn't matter. Start it with the Ephesians prayer. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> so your, your prayer would be, your, before you read your Bible, you'd be like, Father, I'm getting ready to read my Bible. Now I'm asking you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. I'm asking you. When I open this Bible, that the eyes of my heart would be enlightened. I'm asking that I would know more and more the hope of your calling. I'm asking that I would know the glorious inheritance that's on the inside of me and the exceeding greatness of your power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and you seated him at your right hand in the heavenlies. Far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, every name that's named, both now and in the ages yet to come. And you gave him to be head over the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ha! I just listened to one teacher today that I really respect. He said the word of God should be approached with respect and faith. You pray the Ephesians prayer before you read your Bible, your Bible will do amazing things to you. <laughs> your Bible will come alive like what Pastor Ray says, a scripture will get up and start dancing around on the page. Woo! Your Bible is Jesus talking to you. Amen. So write it down. Write down what you feel like those scriptures are saying. In the beginning of your prayer time then, pray that prayer again. Do I have to pray? Yeah, you could do a lot worse than praying the word. Ray McGrath say this to me all over the world. Dana, when we were there in school or here at school, we were praying the epistle prayers and we'd be getting stuff all the time. But then we quit doing that and we wouldn't get anything in prayer. Prayer gets groggy. Prayer gets mystical, ethereal. Uh, prayer gets depressing. All you're really doing is running your engines and worrying. It gets difficult. Like what my husband says, a dull knife. It just doesn't cut it. It squashes your tomato. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you keep it red hot sharp don't get over familiar with the word of God esteem these prayers these amazing prayers hallelujah that are doorways for you like my husband says if you want to get to someplace else don't try and run through a wall just open a door man find a door I'll tell you what you'll go right over into these places in God that are not hard to find they're as simple as a child amen it's simple it's easy when prayer gets hard it's ineffectual so in your prayer time, what probably what about 90% of what Lonnie and I do is just get people to actually exercise their faith when they're praying, not to disengage. And we pray in tongues, maybe more than y'all, I don't know. But when we pray in tongues, we don't just slobber out our prayer language. We exercise. My husband's got one of the wildest prayer languages I've ever heard. Uh, not that wild makes it good, but it's interesting. Hallelujah. He's always working the scriptures. When I speak in tongues, right now, I'm speaking mysteries. When I speak in tongues, I am edifying myself. When I speak in tongues, I am entering into the rest. This is the refreshing. With stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to this people. Amen. I'm speaking mysteries. I'm giving thanks well. Hallelujah. He's working those scriptures and then beheading himself, as it were, and just speaking in tongues. You do the speaking, not the Holy Ghost. You do the speaking. You open your mouth wide. You over enunciate your syllables. And then the Holy Ghost, the helper, will give you unction. <laughs> He'll supply you with utterance. Amen. He's not called the pray for you, or he's called the helper. So you just get your cake hole moving, hallelujah, by faith, and be speaking, and then he'll rise up with unction that makes your eyes look at your mouth and go, what is going on down there? <laughs> hallelujah. And you'll have real unction. So at your prayer time, are you in uh, John 16, 13? Go to John 16, 13, please. So we give you that simple prototype. I double dare you to do that for like two weeks. Pray the Ephesians prayer before you read your Bible. Write down scriptures that jump out to you. And write down what you feel like God's saying to you about those scriptures. Hallelujah. And then just see how strong your heart gets. See how many answers come just on the heels of Bible study that you'll never even have to pray about. And then at your prayer time, start it off with the Ephesians prayer again. You'll get it lodged in your heart, and it'll be awesome. At the beginning of your prayer time, pray, I double-dog dare you to pray that Ephesians prayer all the way through. Then I double-dog dare you to see how far you can pray in your understanding before you ever speak in tongues. I'm telling you. 
So many Christians, charismatics, delegated their prayer life just to speaking in tongues. They're not even really exercising any faith. No, 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 no. I'll pray with the spirit, but I'll pray with the understanding. Amen. I have the mind of, you may all prophesy. Amen. The simple gift of prophecy that comes just edification and comfort. I double dog Daria, especially on the heels of the Ephesians prayer. Oh, and by the way, take your notebook with you into prayer with a pen. Hallelujah. I learned that again, he's made my tongue like the pen of a ready writer. I'm not just coming here, clock, you know, clocking in, clocking out, trying to impress God. I'm really believing to hear from God. Amen. And I'm ready to write down what I believe he's telling me. Even if it's wrong, write it down. Because what he'll do is when you leave the place of prayer, he'll start confirming what is right. You get real with him, he'll get real with you. So you pray the Ephesians prayer, really mean it. And then before you ever hit tongues, <laughs> pray in your understanding. What do I mean by that? If you think of President Barack Obama, pray for him in your understanding. See where you go with that. I'll tell you what, the Holy Ghost hook up with you. And my goodness, oh, you might pray your whole time in understanding. <gasps> no, yes. Hallelujah. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. You might think of Lady Gaga. You know, I'm not going to pray for her to have a new meat dress. That's disgusting. But, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh. And now it's beef jerky. It's in that showcase now, and it's beef jerky. Isn't that nice? Hallelujah. So, but, you know, I started praying Gaga out in tongues. I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, I'm praying for Lady Gaga. Well, it would be nice if she got saved, wouldn't it? Hallelujah. There's another prayer called praying for leaders, those who stand in places of authority. A leader can be a king. A leader can be, um, you know, the president. A leader can be somebody in Hollywood. A leader can be the head of an industry. A leader can be someone who's the head of a tribe in Africa, and that whole tribe gets saved, which we heard of happening. Amen. So you don't know who you're praying for. (laughs) And it keeps it interesting and wonderful, doesn't it? So pray the Ephesians prayer. I double dog dare you to do this. And don't see how long you can pray. How about for a week? Just see how effectual and short you can pray. (laughs) Pray the Ephesians prayer. Then I double dog dare you. Pray in your English. Pray in your understanding. And see what comes out of there. You might just very well slip over into word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Amen. Tumble on over praying out revelation knowledge. Yeah. Just try it out and see what comes out of there. Amen. You already heard from God to go through the greatest miracle door there was, the new birth. Hallelujah. Everything after that's a piece of cake, quite frankly. Hallelujah. Then when you do speak in tongues, really over-enunciate that prayer language. Don't just slobber it out. Now, it might get a little embarrassing. Joe Cack, remember? Joe Cack was this guy. He kind of looks like Kermit the Frog. Don't tell Joe I said that, but he's a great guy. Hallelujah. He's like... He's like Kermit the Frog. He's awesome. And so he, he was praying one time. At, well, first of all, his name's Joe Cack, and we were always praying he'd marry a girl named Jackie, and she'd be Jackie Cack. Sounds like you have a hairball. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. Hallelujah. But, you know, he was praying one time, and because he's praying the Ephesians prayer, he's praying in his understanding, and he's really stretching out and over enunciating that prayer language. In other words, exercising faith when he speaks in tongues. He, you can go over into dialects and stuff, too. Unusual dialects. And he went over to like a Swedish, filmish, Flemish, the kind of thing like Lorsus or like the Swedish chef on Sesame Street. It's like, bork, 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 some more in the floor disorder. And I'm like, oh, brother, see you later. Uh, I, I'm taking off. That's no good for me, you know. But, you know, you don't know what the Holy Ghost might do. But every tribe, kindred, and tongue will stand before the throne. Why don't you go ahead and let the Lord use your tongue, hallelujah, and slip you on over into a people group, hallelujah. If it's got a tongue, God's got a way to reach that people, amen. And you'll be surprised. He slips a Mickey on you, man. You're praying, and you're praying in this other language, and all of a sudden you have a desire for those people, and you're like, what you doing to me, God? You know what I mean? Yeah, but Pastor Ray always says, Dana, never forget there's lost and dying people in five-star restaurants in Paris. (laughs) That's awesome. Hallelujah. Woo! Let's go there. Hallelujah. So, you know, just let your prayer language go where it wants to go. Hallelujah. And that's when I was enunciating my prayer language and Gaga started coming out. I'm like, oh, Gaga is gagging me. (laughs) Gaga! But then we heard stuff about her, you know. She was raised Catholic, you know, and I'm not defending anything, but you know what? (laughs) Ain't no fish too big for the ultimate fisherman. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, she, she was on David Letterman, and they said uh, that uh, he asked her a question, and there's, she thinks there's some kind of spirit that follows her around. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. And she's trying to get rid of it. 